veterans get alienated. Mm -hmm. And the ones that maybe do have some sort of issues, they get exacerbated by everybody putting these labels on them and then isolating them. Part of this, the PTSD, is because of the way that society has actually framed veterans when we come back. You know, hey, okay, if you need any sort of help, you're going to get this label first off. Then there's a lot of folks that we don't have the PTSD in the traditional sense. What we have is this feeling of isolation. There are some people, and I know them personally, that have experienced some atrocities. They don't want to talk about that with their family members, with their friends, with civilians in general. And so they don't talk about that at all. And that does bottle up and that creates some major issues for them because they can't get past that mentally. When you don't have anybody you can talk to about that, then it makes it really challenging for them to get back into society. And we're trying to build this community back up so that veterans do not feel isolated anymore because we need to have a place where they can talk about it. Hey, welcome back everyone. Now, veterans, we have a whole lot of them these days because of the almost ongoing wars, the war in Iraq, war in Afghanistan, war just about everywhere else these days. A uh, whole lot of them, folks, many of them have been, of course, framed by the media as all having PTSD and this and that, and not all of them like that label. And so here to talk with us about this is Jeff Barnes. He's with the Veterans Council. And Jeff, real pleasure having you on Crossroads. Thank you very much. Appreciate you having me. And so, you know, we were talking a bit off camera about kind of what veterans could really use. And you mentioned that they're kind of all framed by the media as that everyone has PTSD and this and that. And of course, some of them do suffer from it. But, you know, is it really beneficial to them? And what, what, what do they really need uh, to really kind of get back in the movement of things? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, putting labels on people like that and you label them instantly, automatically, everybody else thinks of them as like, oh, this poor little baby, this poor person. You know, obviously they can't take care of themselves. And it's just a bunch of BS, right? Let's be honest. Veterans are the most capable people um, when it comes to following rules, creating processes, completing a mission, making sure that everything gets done properly, documenting everything, dotting the I's, crossing the T's, they're perfectly capable. And part of this, the PTSD, is because of the way that society has actually framed veterans when we come back, you know, hey, okay, if you need any sort of help, you're gonna get this label first off, and then we need you to go to the VA, and once you go to the VA, then maybe you'll start getting some sort of help elsewhere. Well. The, the VA is over a burden. We already know how many struggles they faced in the, in the years. Veterans get alienated. Mm -hmm. And the ones that maybe do have some sort of issues, they get exacerbated by everybody putting these labels on them and then isolating them. Oh, we don't know how Uncle Joe's going to do. We don't know if we should invite him because this might set him off. Or should we really go to a Halloween party? There might be loud noise. Maybe we should just leave him at home. Right. So mm -hmm. things like that really do happen. And so these vets get alienated and they don't get a chance to talk about it. No one wants to hear about it because most people can't handle the truth. Let's be honest. Um, not everybody's that's a veteran has had to go into the front lines, but there's still been a lot of stuff that they've had to deal with. And when you don't have anybody you can talk to about that, then it makes it really challenging for them to get back into society and really put that mission first again and have something meaningful to look forward to. And that's interesting, the idea that they feel alienated and they feel coddled maybe by society too much and they don't like that feeling. I mean, I can understand anybody would be bothered by that, especially any like man would not like that feeling that you feel isolated, you feel kind of kicked out and you feel like society is trying to coddle you and make you sound like you're like not enough of a man or something like that. I mean, how, how do you help them then? What do you, what do, you yeah, do? Right. Like, and they make you feel like you don't really fit in. You're not really a leader. You don't understand the way we do things here. Okay. Right. That's, that's a lot of the message we send. So I'll give you an example. At 24 years old, I was on a nuclear power plant or a nuclear powered submarine running the nuclear power plant Had 25 guys that reported to me and we traveled all over the world underneath the water, no call on a friend, no phone on a friend, something went wrong. Right. And things did go wrong. And we took care of it. We figured it out. And then I get out of the military and they're like, okay, well, you know, that sounds good. It sounds like you had some, some pretty cool experiences, but we don't really know what you're capable of doing. So we'll give you the, the lowest rung on the ladder kind of job. And you go from operating a billion dollar piece of equipment and managing 25 people to, we don't really know if you have what it takes to do a job. <laughs> I see what you mean. Yeah. Right. And yeah. it starts with something like that because society doesn't know where to put veterans. They don't understand there's a correlation between what they did in the service to what they can do in the corporate world or in the civilian world. So do you, do you think a lot of it is that they're not being given challenges or opportunities that have difficulties that they're capable of dealing with and they come back and they're in these like basically roles that just push them so far below what they feel they can actually do? 
Absolutely. Not only that, but when you do that to somebody, you say, okay, well, your skill set may be up here, but you know, the job we're giving you is down here, so you don't really have any responsibility. Well, one of the things that makes veterans thrive is you give them responsibility and you set them up for success. All right. A lot of what happens in society these days is we're not going to give you a lot of responsibility because we don't really know what you can do yet. And as a result, we're just going to stuff you over here. And oh, by the way, we're not really setting you up for success. There's no real way to climb the corporate ladder, you know, on and on. And a big challenge that we're trying to face or, or trying to solve right now is getting veterans reintegrated into society in the business world, whether that's owning their own business and being an entrepreneur, which, by the way, just as a quick sidebar, after World War II, 50% of vets that went, that left the service started their own business. Today, hmm. that's down to 4.5%. All right, so we're putting veterans into a system that is telling them, you have to do it our way when they're bringing a completely separate paradigm and they know how to operate inside of, you know, let's, let's be honest, they, they have to operate with the boots they have and the backpack on their back. They're not given all the resources the big corporations have, so they know how to improvise. Corporations don't like that. Right? Yeah, yeah. And so they're, they're preventing them from actually using those skills they have. And that makes them feel like they're just not really relied upon and they're not a, a productive member of that. And when you leave the service and whether you like the service you did or what you did in the service, you felt like you were something bigger than yourself. And putting somebody in a position where now they're just another cog in the wheel, it's not what they want. And, and that, that's, that's something I hear a lot of my friends talk about who are you know, veterans and who served, is that they feel that they were part of something bigger than themselves. Mm -hmm. And when they come out of it and they feel that they, you know, they're just doing these like puppy dog jobs, basically like that. It's like, yeah. it's like, it's like, it's like, it just... Uh, I, I don't explain it. Eats it. At you. It, it just yeah, it, it eats, eats away. It, it eats at them. It inside. eats a hole yeah. inside yeah. you, and you get to this point, and you feel hollow. All right, mm -hmm. and I think this is a lot of what's happening, and people can't really put words to it. But veterans will start to just feel disenfranchised with everything. They start to get frustrated. They start to get upset. They can't really say why because they have a job. Everything's going well for them, you know, on the outside, but inside, there's no bigger mission anymore. There's no bigger yeah, purpose yeah. that they're driving after. When you go on deployment. Whether you're infantry, whether you're an airman, whether you're a submariner, you're a SEAL, ranger, it doesn't really matter. You go out there with a mission and you go out there with a team and you all have the same goals and you're all fighting for the same thing. All right. And so they know what's at stake and they know that they can't let the person to the left of them and to the right of them down. You put that same mentality in corporate world where you've got a guy who graduated from high school and graduated from college, but never really had a whole bunch of responsibility, but now has the exact same job. <laughs> and, you know, we'll show up late to work or call in sick because they don't feel like coming in. And this guy who's the veteran is like, there was no calling in sick if you're on deployment. And like, where are you going to go? <laughs> you know, you get your ass out of the sack and you get to work, right? It doesn't matter how you feel. And so when you start putting these mentalities together, it gets really challenging. But now you're saying, well, I'm being compared against the same benchmark as this guy over here. He seems to be doing just as well as I am. Why am I doing this? Right. Mm -hmm. So you, they start questioning a lot of things that are happening and they can't really always put words to that. And that does eat into this feeling of loneliness and being obfuscated from society and being cast off. And everybody else just starts to think this person has PTSD. That's not really it at all. Well, folks, two months on now, and we are still totally demonetized by YouTube. Given the situation where we have to censor ourselves if we want to really stay on this platform and make it work, we've decided on something else, which is this. We've launched a new platform called Epic TV, e -P -O -C -H -T -V .com. And through this, we're able to publish uncensored content. News that can criticize anything we'd like, news that can talk about anything we'd like, news that can give you real information from any part of the world about any topic without having to worry whether individuals will censor it. And in this current environment where information is being controlled, where narratives are being controlled, and where anyone who steps outside the boundaries of what is the accepted narrative by the fact checkers, you know, quote unquote, by different big tech organizations, by media organizations, and so on. This is something that we believe is needed for the modern political environment, where people should be able to call things out. People should be able to question things. This is the basis of the fourth estate in America. The belief, again, that media should be able to hold government power in check, and that media should be able to inform the public about the issues they should be informed about, because that is the basis of our election system. An informed public making informed decisions 
If you control this system of information, you control the political system. And folks, being a media organization, we can't stand for that. And so again, we have created an uncensored platform, Epic TV. And anyone who wants to support Crossroads or support our broader mission of bringing real news, uncensored news, it's not afraid to stand up for what matters, please check out our website, epochtv.com, epochtv.com. Check out the link below. And folks, please support us there.